My name is Kim Silk. I'm with the town of Woodbury. I am the chairperson of the transitional committee until the new board is elected later this month. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to receive input from you, the members, um, on the articles. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Orice, who has been heading that committee, and she'll introduce herself and I assume her committee members. Yes. Okay, thank you, Kim. Um, I'm Orize, I'm from Hardwick. I have worked, not as head, but in conjunction with my committee, and I'll let the, our committee, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Catherine Ingram, um, on the Hardwick Town Board. Jennifer Laundrie, on the Hardwick Town School Board. I'm Stephen Murphy, I'm on the Woodbury School Board. Thank you all very much for coming. I'm John Miller uh, from Standard, and I serve on the Lakeview Board. Thank you. And we have one more member, Sam Friend, from Greensboro, but I don't think she's here tonight. Does everyone have a copy of what we're working from? And I do want to thank you all for coming out on a Monday night in the rain. It's better than having the snow. It'll make it all melt. Oh, is it icy in some spots? Well, I come down Center Road, and that was actually good tonight, so I'm happy. Um, I'll start with a little history. We've had seven official meetings to get this work done, to start with the default articles that the state gave us back in November. So that's where we started with the default articles. In the default articles, there's whatever is in red on the document you have in front of you is non-amendable. We couldn't change a period to a comma or an I to a U. It's as is from the Agency of Education. So those are off the table. Then the ones that are in black that do not have any strike throughs or any blue words in them are the ones that we did not amend that we were happy with these and those, if there's something in those that you think should be amended, we'd love to hear it, but the committee felt that they were fine. So now we're down to four articles and a new one. So there's five articles that we actually want to talk about first tonight. And the two that I'd like to talk about first are the ones that need to be approved by each town. When they gave us the articles, the state board divvied the articles up on how they can be amended. Some of them cannot be amended. Those are in the red. There's one that can be amended only by the board, and that is the name of the school district. And how the new board does that will depend on who's on the new board that we elect April 22nd. Then there's a group that has to be approved individually by each town. So all four towns will vote on these and we're looking at the end of May for our voting. I haven't got the date. Do you have the, the 28th of May will be Australian ballot for these. And there are two that we amended that fall under each town has to approve. So that means they'll be voted on and then counted by town and all four towns have to approve. And the first one is Article 3. And Article 3 refers to the attendance of schools and who will attend what school. So we entirely deleted what was put there and then we added verbiage so that each school will be attended each student in the grade um, will attend the school in the town that they live. And however, we did offer the option that if a child in town A wanted to go to the school in town B, that they could apply through a process and we left the process up to the new union board to determine. So 
where we, rather than make the kids go, because this is a union district, it'll have three schools, and the kids and the parents, actually the parents and guardians, could make a request that their child attend a different school for whatever reason the parent has in their mind, and it would go to the new union district board policy. There are a lot of policies out there already written, so it shouldn't take a long time to determine. We're not making a recommendation on which policy and who's going to make the decision, but we felt that it was important that the kids have, the parents have a choice in which school, as long as we're running three schools in our district, to attend. Article four, oh, and then the restructuring of that in B, the only change we made is as Woodbury does not have a building to convey because the town of Woodbury owns a school, not the school board, we will be leasing the Woodbury school board. So we had to ask, add the words leased or when we're talking about conveying a school building to the new district. Yes, and Greensboro also has a lease because they have some of their students, I forgot that, thank you, Stephen, have some of their students in the old, that's the old school building, right? That's now the town building, and they have their fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, I understand, in that building. So we would also be talking about that leased space. And then in Article 4, for closing of a school, we left the first paragraph as it was, except for, we, again, we added the word least or, so that we would cover that. And then we struck the second paragraph, which referred to if a school district joining the new union had a union school district, such as Lakeview, it treated them differently than it did Hardwick and Woodbury. So we deleted that paragraph, leaving in there that all three schools would be treated the same if it came to closing a school. And that would be done in the first two years only by a vote of the people in the town in which the school was located. So if either Lakeview, Hardwick, or Woodbury was going to be closed, Greensboro, Hardwick, and Woodbury town voters would have to approve of that closure in the first two years. And we didn't want it to be different for Lakeview because what was proposed in the um, default articles that were given to us is that a union school could be closed by the vote of the entire electorate rather than the people that it affected in their town. So we struck that in order to keep Lakeview the same as Hardwick and Woodbury. So if you'd like to discuss those two articles, if you had any comments one way or the other, agreement changes, we're taking information, just a minute, Diane, we're taking information tonight and the board, the committee, is meeting again Friday night to review this. We're not making any decisions this evening. We're just here to gather your information and find out what the public thinks so that when they go to vote, we've had our public input and you folks have had a chance. If you don't want to speak tonight and you'd like to send a message to the committee before Friday morning so I can print them out, come to me and I'll give you my email address. And then you can just hit me off an email and I'll print it out and hand it to the committee and we can discuss it Friday night if you're more comfortable doing it that way. Diane. I just wanted just to say about the, um, I guess it's three, the, the language regarding this. The language regarding the school choice, um, I just think it's too vague that it just says subject to the policies developed by the new union school district, and I understand that this would be handed over to the merge board to flesh it out, but it doesn't say that the new union board must adopt a policy that would allow some type of school choice. So that's my comment. Okay. You want it to have more force. Yes. Okay. That's noted. Um, we were comfortable. We talked about that, and we talked about having input into the policy itself, but the feeling was that we wanted the new board to have that discretion to establish it because everybody will be voting for their members and we'll have eight people representing all four towns on that initial board and we felt it was important that they have it. But if you want 
to say that they must develop a policy. We can consider that. Catherine has taken our notes for Friday night. Peter? Perhaps uh, two procedural uh, questions. One is, uh, what happens if, if, if a, a town defeats, doesn't go along with uh, one of these articles? That's the first question. And as Lakeview Union, will those two towns be commingled as a union or will they still be counted separately? The union will no longer exist. It'll be, you can, I don't know what they're going to do with the names of the towns. That's not part of the committee work. Your first question, if the, say, Article 3 does not pass, it'll go back to the default article. And that is in here as to what has been stricken. So if Article 3A, and I'm not sure how they're voting on this because it's going to be in the hands of our lawyer to determine how this is warned and whether you have to vote on Article 3A and B together or if it's Article 3A and then Article 3B. Um, I haven't heard definitively how the lawyer is going to suggest we do that, and that's up to the new initial board, because they would be the ones warning this as part of their work. Um, if, if we go by section and say it's Article 3A, and it is defeated by one town, then we would have to go back to what is stricken and it still allows for school choice, but it's the superintendent's determination. And it's given to us as the superintendent's determination um, on the school's capacity to serve the child. Can I ask a follow-up? Yep. So in regards to the, uh, ch these changes and um, uh, amending the, what the, the, the state gave us in terms of, of the, the Articles of Agreement, the train has already left the, the station as far as this is a decision being made. There's no way that the electorate at large or whatever has any say in this, in terms of th this, this uh, proceeding. I'm not sure I understand. No, in other words, we didn't have to do this. We didn't have to t uh, 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 develop our own Articles of Agreement within this uh, tight timeline. We could, have, we, could have, we could have taken the two-year two window and, and then worked, over, worked on it over time. Okay, he's asking if we could have taken the two-year window. Um, right now, we don't have a two-year window. Unless legislature did something today, I'm unaware of. My understanding is that we have to follow current law. Current law says your board has to be elected. And ha we have to merge by January, July 1st, 2019 as per current law. There is legislation that is in the House and Senate um, compromiser, what do they call it? Conference. Conference committee, where they mediate, there's changes in what the House approved and what the Senate approved. And there are things in there that give us a carrot if we merge right now. My understanding of the, the legislation is that Yes, because it's been warned we're going to vote on, on April 22nd regarding voting our merged board. However, we have till much longer after that regarding the Articles of Agreement. We can discuss them tonight, give whatever changes we want. This does not have to be voted on May 28th. We can decide to vote later. That is true, but our recommendation is that we vote now and keep moving on in the process. Be right with you, Carol. I'll let another board member speak, our committee member speak. We, we've been aware of all the different like timelines that have been thrown out there. Um, one, of the, one of the big things that I think we felt was important about doing this is that having, um, having a say in this is really important. These are really important articles and Personally, I think it would be really difficult if we had to take the default ones that the state gave us. So our feeling was, let's, we, and, and it's, we should make this clear, we are making this recommendation of the final thing that we give. It's gonna be a recommendation to the new board. It is not going to be in final. They can still make changes to it. They can still decide different things for it. Um, but we felt like it was important to move forward. So it's my understanding that this is just a working draft. You're going to tweak these amendments, these articles. They go back to the state, I presume? No. no. 
So going forward, the work that you're doing here will be solid. Whether it's changed a little bit in committee, does not go back to the state. Okay, thank you. The only thing we're going to do when we have a finished document is air it by the lawyer to make sure that it's legal and that we, as lay people, who are looking out for the best interest of all our students, and thus the parents and taxpayers, have the best verbiage, the right idea, and that whatever we come up with is legal. And we're going ahead, and the full board, the new board will have to make that decision, as Catherine said, and we're just a committee that will present it to them, and then they will take it from there. Diane. The reason I'm suggesting is that we wait is that I think it's important for the merge board to have time to learn to collaborate as a merge board. We have a very compressed timeline. We have three boards of four towns who have not had to work together like this in the past. So I say this in the spirit of collaboration. It's, I don't say this in the spirit of the us and them. I think it's important to give this merge board time to work through some of the public comment they received tonight and may receive in the future. And April 22nd is right around the corner, and they'll have to vote that night. They'll have to be elected and vote that night in order to warn these for May 28th. And if I was going to be in that board, it's not a lot of time. Thank you, Diane. And again, that's a decision that board will have to make. We can't make it for them. Pardon? That board hasn't been warned anyway. Just the election of the board members. Right. But that's all that's on that. And then... They, they, I understand, will have a meeting of the board by themselves, and that'll be worn through the superintendent's office, if that's still the plan. That's still the plan. Yes, Stephen. If I don't see your hand up, Paula, then we're small enough here. In proposing these amendments, this committee is attempting to tailor these default articles to serve the unique interests of our town and to hopefully set us on solid footing going forward. It's true that we do not have to amend these now, but our intention is to, to start, the, start this merger with the common, common interest being served first of our students, but then also acknowledging the unique interests of each town and trying to serve those. So we're, um, another, another principle we were trying to observe here is attempting to create stability for the first two years, which is built into the default articles for two years. Stability, but also allowing flexibility. So we welcome your input. We're trying to set this merger on a good footing cooperatively so um, we can let the merits of each school determine the uh, operation of the district. Are there any other comments in regards to Articles 3 and 4 before we move on? Okay, the next article that we changed and are able to change is Article 6. Oh, I'm sorry, Diane. So Article 4, Article 4 covers school closure, right? Yes. Yeah. Again, I feel that there's not enough protections in here for the small schools. Um, we're not allowing for um, an information meeting to be held by the merge board, and there's no requirement for any information meetings to be held in the town where the school is located that would be closed. So I just think that's an important protection for everybody to have right in the articles. Thank you. Okay. That will be discussed Friday night. Yes. Um, Judy Carpenter from Greensboro. One is, in regards to this, it looks like for the next two years, the town will have choice, and after that, it will, it not, be, it will not be the town. After the next two years, starting in 21-22, it will be the district, and the town could be outvoted by the larger towns, or just because the representation will still be equal by town. Could you repeat that? I'm I'm sorry, yeah, but, Okay, I'm looking at this article Which four. Which article are you looking at? I'm looking at article four about closure. Okay. And, and in B, it says starting in 2021-22 and after, it's a first 
no, it's not uh, no longer approved by the town in which the school is located. It's approved by the electorate of the new union district. So at that point, the town ceases to have control. Am I correct about that? Yes. And I had a second. Okay. My second question is regarding, you said earlier about the Lakeview Union District being dissolved. In that case, because it's part of the new union, Greensboro and Standard, what happens to the property that is now owned by that union? That property will be conveyed to the new union district because the school board of Lakeview owned it and it's directed in the articles that we cannot change that any property material contents, anything that is owned by Lakeview Union, Hardwick Elementary, and Woodbury School Boards, the three school boards, has to be conveyed to the new Union District on the date of merger. And that's why we had to put in leased, because Greensboro, uh, Lakeview uses leased space, and Woodbury has leased space. And or will have their, well, it's technically leased, but they need an official lease. And we took out the part about Lakeview on the bottom of Article 4 because that said the whole electorate could do it. So we wanted to protect, and the, we're not sure, at least I'm not sure, as to whether when it goes back, it says to the town or towns in which the school is located, so I'm not sure, and I haven't heard a legal rendition, whether if, after, you know, if in the two years we wanted to close, the board wanted to close Lakeview, would Greensboro and Standard both vote? Or would it be just Greensboro? We need to get a legal ruling on that to clarify. And the legal ruling doesn't need to be in here. It would just be a legal ruling, because this doesn't have to state every possibility within the legal surmise. So, Catherine, do you have any questions to make sure you've caught everything? I, I got that there are not enough protections for the small schools, no information meeting to be held by the merch board, no meetings held in the town where the school will be closed in regards to Article 4, but I didn't hear any other desire for changes. Um, just put in that Diane commented that we should wait on the articles. Okay. That would, should be discussed. Stephen? There's another recommendation, recommendation I heard, that, and that was that the option for district choice should be mandatory. That, that the policy be mandatory. Article three, right. I'm sorry, yeah. I have that down for Article 3. Like, yeah. regarding school choice, it shouldn't be so vague. It should say that the new union board must adopt a policy where there were, where school choice would be what happens. Did we miss anything? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, say that I know that several folks in this room have received an email of some ideas from uh, a constituent who wasn't able to be here tonight. Uh, there, some, many people in some people in this room received an email from a constituent who isn't able to be here this evening. And I just want to make sure that that those ideas there, um, many of them already have been stated, but one being um, a three quarters vote of the board to even propose a school closure. Um, so just some interesting ideas there that I would like to be considered. The committee also received that email and I've assured the lady that sent it to us that I copied it and it'll be added to our comments in its entirety. Um, I'd like to also reiterate, this seems an incredibly hasty process about enormous articles that will affect not just the next two years, but many, many years to come. This is an extremely, an extremely low turnout of our populace. And my guess is most people don't understand what these articles are about and how important they are. I would reiterate that the boards go back and make a real attempt to reach out to their constituents, to educate them, and to try to inform them that this really matters. Otherwise, the turnout that you have who will vote for these articles will not really understand the effects that they'll have in the future. That's important to do. Thank you. Trisha Alley Greensboro. Um, just remember the microphone is like an ice cream cone. <laughs> Comes from hanging with kids. 
Um, I really support the idea of waiting and giving ourselves time to develop a real relationship. And I know that Lakeview is on the cusp of some really exciting pilot programs that could impact all of us. So, um, in discussing these, we are talking about the other dis school, the schools in the district as well. And Lakeview is small enough that we can try a pilot. One of them is positive education, and that would be a collaboration through the Shipley School in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, with the positive education program at the University of Pennsylvania. That's global research. Imagine what it would mean to our children to know that everything they do at school matters globally. That's worth pondering. Um, and the same is, is true for a collaboration with the Vermont Symphony Orchestra. Um, for diminishing school budgets, it's really exciting to have the arts as, a, as possibly um, financed privately. Thank you. I just want to piggyback on what Trish said. Um, I think all our schools have a lot of really good things going on. Again, this process is not given, I speak for myself, anybody really time to learn much about what everybody else is doing. Um, I'm on the transitional board and we were supposed to get, and I don't think we really got a full accounting and I'm not blaming the SU. Again, I don't think there was time. We wanted just simple information like how many FTEs work in the school. What are the programs that you have? What are the programs you want to keep no matter what? So that other committee is also working away and again, because of lack of time, we're meeting again Wednesday night, and we've got to give a draft budget to this new merge board, and they will be voting on that budget because they have to, to have a budget for May 28th that night. So essentially, the work we're doing on the transitional board is the budget work. And I can't tell you how fast the train is going on that. And I think there's a lot of good things that we all don't know about at each other's schools. So. I'd just like to give a little historic uh, uh, context to what we're, what's happening here. Uh, first of all, if you don't know, I was on the State Board of Education when this ruling or this directive from the AOE came in very, very late in the whole process. It was like 11th and a half hour. I, I had to recuse myself. I could not comment or, or, or vote on it. And that is that the, the whole thing with the Lakeview Union uh, was they, they, they flipped it and said, you can, you can unionize because you can join with Lakeview Union, whereas before, where we tried to do, if, if anybody remembers with Act 153, the Lakeview Union was always the fly in the ointment because we couldn't get around that in terms of unionizing, for instance, the uh, sending districts to the Hazen or whatever. The key thing is here, what we're creating is a new municipality. A new municipality has the authority to create a budget and, and to tax. That's very serious business, uh, and 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 I, I do think that this 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 sh this needs to be considered in, in the context of we're creating a whole new governing body to be able to uh, uh, educate and our kids, but also in terms of, of being able to uh, tax and, and uh, budget and tax uh, raise taxes. That's 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 a big deal. Um, so I just I want you to consider that because. This doesn't come, come by us every day. This is, this is once in a kind of a lifetime event, if that. Thank goodness. <laughs> I just want to, I'm curious to know why um, in, in A and B, the, the votes are different. Why it's an electorate of the new union district in B, but A is different? What are, you know, have the, what are you voted by the so the first two years it's by the school town because we thought it wasn't fair for anybody to come in and be able to vote 
and close a school without that community input. Then after the two years when um, everybody's, you know, had their rounds and we know where our student population is, you know, is people shifting? Are they staying? You know, what's, what's numbers looking like? It's really hard to project numbers and tax dollars without running this district. So we put the two years in the top and then we figured by two years our boards would have worked together long enough that then they need to have the power to do, you know, to be able to change things after that without us being able to say, no, you have to do this. So I'd like to suggest, if I could, that, that B be similar to A, where the towns also have to vote. Is there a reason? What do you mean by the towns have to vote? Yes, and that was in the default articles, and we just left it as it was. We did okay. not change that. Okay, so my suggestion, I'd like the committee to uh, discuss, maybe, or maybe you have, and there's a reason why. We did discuss how long we were going to leave this, whether we would leave it two years, whether we would say no to the two years, and we've been meeting since December on this issue, and we've been discussing it back and forth between us with emails saying, well, let's try this, let's try that, let's do this, let's do that. And this is the one that we currently have before us for your comments. And the reason was that, as Jennifer said, we wanted the new board, after two years, they won't be new, they'll be experienced, they'll know what's going on in the district, they'll know the financing, and they'll know where the kids are going to school and what happens, and it'll be a vote of the board to bring it to the electorate. And then how they, you know, they would have to have public hearings and any vote that you take, you have to have public hearings. It would be a co-mingled vote. It would be a co-mingled vote. So again, I'm just, my input is. Okay, like and you've got that? Yep, that's been noted. Yes, ma'am. In addition to that, or to build off of that, you, in, in your discussion, you said that you felt your committee. I, I have a cold. I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, you, in your committee, you discussed and felt that um, after two years, the board would then have a good sense of programming and numbers, and and be able to make a different kind of a decision um, because you had given two years. But I wonder about that two years because, as we know. As we've heard, there are some programs that are being explored and some piloting different pieces. And I question that really those two years are enough time to see you know, the impact of these pilot programs or these new identities that these schools are trying to you know, cultivate. Um, because as we know, it takes time to build a program and to get the word out and to get people involved. Anything else new on articles three and four? Okay, so one thing I just want to say is that we, specifically with Article 4, as I said, we went back and forth and all, we're all over the place in different, in different drafts, sorry. Um, we were all over the place with this. We really had just about every single different thing that you could. And um, I think that it's important to know that one of, the, one of the things about the legislature right now is that if we merge sooner, then we have the guaranteed small schools grant. And the small schools grant and the budget is the main reason why we kept it at these two years. Because if the board is faced with a major increase because the small schools grant goes away, it puts them in a really tough position if they have to bring an enormous increase in taxes to their voters. And if they can't get a budget passed keeping all three schools open, they have to be able to move quickly with these things. And and that was part of the reason why. But I, I think, I guess my... Can I just say, that's speculation. The legislature hasn't, hasn't resolved I understand I, that. But, but that's another reason why they shouldn't be, shouldn't be rushed on that premise. You, you, can't, you can't base anything on that premise at this point. Okay, that'll be discussed on Friday night. I'm very sure of that. Anything new, Diane? 
My understanding of the legislation is if your district is operational, assuming that this legislation does come out of this conference committee, um, they do have, you know, a conference committee has been named. Um, and you would, if the Senate version is passed, the schools will then, uh, and that, which would mean you'd have to be operational by July 1st, 2019, and would be eligible to receive the small schools grant if in fact you've been receiving it. However, we're talking about the amendments tonight. It does not require that the district vote and pass on amendments before July 1st. That's correct, and again, that's up to the new board. We're just working as a committee. We're bringing ideas to the public. We're asking for public input on the articles, not debating whether they're gonna be voted on or not. That's not our job. So unless there's something new about the wording in the articles themselves, the amendments, I'd like to move along. Did you? Well, I think the elephant in the room that's sort of alluded to with small grants and so forth is how much control do we actually have over this and how much are we restricted by the state? In regards to the small school grants? In regards to this whole process. To the whole process? We have been instructed by the, Depart the Agency of Education to move along and merge July 1st. If you want to merge July 1st and have a, in my opinion, and I, we have not discussed this specifically at committee, and you want to have control over what happens in this district, then I suggest and recommend that we take the articles and we approve them. They can be amended again later if we find that something is not working. These are not set in concrete and can never be touched again. Article 14 at the end of the document tells you how things can be amended and the process. And after we go beyond this point, I, suggest, I assume from my reading of the amendments and the Article 14 that it would start at the board. So if the board finds that something is not working, or if you as the public go to the board and say something doesn't look like it's working, we need to change something in the articles, then that can still happen. Yes, Stephen. It's my understanding also that under statute, with a 5% petition from the electorate, the electorate could, could petition the board to warn a vote to change the article. So it may either be initiated by the board, it may be initiated in the future by either the board or the electorate. So our eyes is correct that these may be amended any time after. Except for the ones that are non-amendable that are currently in red. Those the agency has said we cannot amend. And that would take a change, I'm assuming, of the agency to tell us we can amend those. But everything else in there is amendable at a future date. So unless, Peter, something new? Well, yes, it, it, you, it would be the, the entire electorate of the new union, not the district, at the district level, that they, the, these amendments would have to occur. Yes, yeah. yes, and the, the full electorate. We will become one district if we follow current law on July 1st, 2019, and that's a fact. That is what the state board issued on their November 28th document that was dated November, 20, November 30, so there's two dates. And they voted on the 28th and issued the report, I believe, on the 30th, is how it reads. And we will be a new district. The four or the five school boards that are currently in existence will not be in existence except for standard, which will keep their school board because they do 712 choice. The rest of us have Hayes and Union, so we do not have to have a 712. And this new board, when it is elected on the 22nd, will be there. The current school boards will stay after July 1st, only to finish up the year-end work as required by their schools. And most of that will be just to approve an audit and to make sure the audits are done for the four town, for the three schools and the Greensboro Town School Board. So this is why we feel it is important that we go into the new district with the changes as presented or as finished after your input. <coughs> we can debate that issue all night. But we're not here to debate. We are here to listen to you 
about the articles. So I'd like to move on, if possible, to Article 6, which is the rest of these are amended by the general public vote. They will be done in each town, and then the votes co-mingled, and a total yes or no will determine whether that specific article or group of articles, however we vote on them, per our attorney, tells us. Article 6, in the black, talked about, came directly from the Agency of Education on subsequent sale of real property to the town in which it is located any year in the future. So if in year 20, one of the schools is closed, this article is still pertinent. And what it does is it says, the town in which the school is located has the option to buy the building for $1 but they take, the town would take over any existing bond payments and they would have to run the school for community and public purposes for a minimum of five years. We added the first blue if they elect to use the real property exclusively for other than community and public purposes, then the town should compensate the new union district for capital improvements and reno renovations initiated after the merger date of July 1 and prior to the sale of the town. And we put that in there, the word exclusively, because what if you wanted to use the building for multi-uses? As long as there was still space available for public and community purposes, community and public purposes as it stated in the default articles, we felt that it was up to the town to decide how to use that building as long as it met the minimum of the requirements from the agency and that for five years part of that building be allowed to be used for public and community use. Um, you could turn it into community housing and then leave a conference room if you needed a conference room in the town or a library or whatever the town decided. And then the second blue says if the town in which the property is located decides they do not want to take over ownership, it would then be offered to the town in the U new union district that is the closest per property line. And then if that town didn't want it, it would go to the next one. So eventually we added that it could be any town in the district could end up with a school going down through order of purchase, order of decision. And that way it would stay in the district and could be used for community and public purposes in the district. If nobody wants it and they decide not to, then it'll be sold pursuant to Vermont statutes, just as Hardwick did decades ago when we closed all our little one-room schools and Walden did the same. And then at part C, we did away with the part about the union school building in, at Lakeview because there was another place there where that building was treated differently than Woodbury and Hardwick, and we didn't think that was fair. We wanted fair and just, and so we struck that and added about the leases and that we would honor the lease for real property to a forming district until the termination of that lease, but no later than June 30 of 2021. Again, the two year, sticking with the two years. And the parties, Lakeview and Woodbury, that are dealing with that issue at this point, know that, and that is how they're working on the leases they have to have. And then after that, a lease would be renewed through the new district board, which has the authority to do the leases as any current school board currently does. Sir? You can stand up. Really? Yeah, maybe you can hear you. That's okay. I'm, yeah, I'm Norm Eckman from Woodbury, and um, first I'd like to thank the Articles Committee. You've done a lot of work on this, and I think uh, made some sub substantial improvements um, in certain areas. Um, on, on this article, um, the second paragraph of B, I don't think it should exist at all. I think that um, uh, 
the towns, especially, you know, Woodbury and, and Greensboro, um, have put a lot into those buildings, and now it's going to be sent to the combined district if it goes back to the towns. I don't see why it should have any encumbrances aside from those contained in the first paragraph. Um, and also, there's a lot of problems with the way it's worded and uh, a lack of clarity in terms of what the terms mean. Um, the, you know, as you expressed before, it could be 20 years down the road that this comes into play. It could be there was a capital improvement that was made early on that has zero value left, yet this calls for a reimbursement of the full amount. Um, and other issues, like I said, I think that paragraph should be eliminated in its entirety. And it does state in the first paragraph that um, the sum of one dollar subject to all encumbrances and the assumption of payment on outstanding bonds and repayment of school construction aid or grants required by the state. Yeah, but I see what you're saying, yes. And we have that noted. Thank you. We're on Article 6. I'm not sure what page it is because I cut and pasted. It's on page 3 and under Article 6B. And it's titled Subsequent, Subsequent Sale of Real Property to Town in Which It Is Located at Any Year in the Future. And that is one that's approved by all. And we have your comments, sir. Thank you. Yes, Diane. Uh, A, on that, uh, under Article 6, it, says, it can't be changed because it's in red, but it says the forming district shall convey to the new union district for the sum of one dollar. I realize this whole lease issue is being uh, uh, reevaluated and figured out, but uh, it's just interesting that it seems pretty clear. The red part here, which can't be changed, says no later than June 30th, the forming district shall convey to the new union district for the sum of one dollar and subject to the encumbrance of record all of their school-related real and personal property, including all land, buildings, and contents. Yes, that means that Greensboro Board, Woodbury Board, Hardwick Board, Lakeview Union Board, Standard Board, any school property that they have pertaining to pre-K through six will be conveyed to the new district so that the new district starting on July 1st has school and property and contents. That's what that means. But lease and convey are two different instruments. Yes, and that's why we, that's why we added the or leased in the other places because the space that Lakeview is using and the space that Woodbury is using for their education will be leased by the district for at least two years and then at the discretion of the new district board, the new union district board, and they will be the ones deciding current leases as they should be. We should not be instructing them on the day-to-day -day operation of a school just like we don't do our current boards now. A school board can enter, is it a three-year lease? A school board now can enter into a three-year lease by their own vote at a legally warned board meeting. If they want to go with a lease longer than three years, they have to get approval of the voters of that district, whatever the school board covers. And we felt that this new union district should not be treated any different than that because state law controls what they can lease and what they can't and how the leases have to work. And you have to trust the new district board to work together and the votes will be other than the first two articles we talked about everything will be done by the electorate even the as like we get further into this either the even the voting of all board members will be done by the full electorate if these articles are approved and that was what we felt was important that we learn to become one not four because on July 1st as it stands today, 
we will be one district, just as Hayes and Union is one district that encompasses the towns of Woodbury, Greensboro, and Hardwick. We're already got that base to work together. And we took that after a few meetings where we were uncomfortable and it was new for us. And change is hard. We came together and we looked at the betterment of all our students, all our staff, and all our citizens. And we didn't say, this is better for Greensboro, this is better for Hardwick, this is better for Woodbury, and this is better for Standard. We said, we're concerned for all. And that's where we came together and came up with this document. And we're hoping that our electorate can take, and I know it's hard, change is hard, and I hate change. And if it's going to change, I want it to change tomorrow. I don't like the process. But there is a process. And Joanne keeps telling me to slow down because we have to follow the process. And I've been told that for all of my public life, working in the schools and whatnot, that you have to slow down. And as one lady said, the new programs take time to implement. Well, if you've got a new program and you want to put it in, do it tomorrow. That's my answer. And I know it doesn't work that way. So if I sound that I'm getting a little pushy, and that's why. Because I want change and I want it now. If we're going to do it. So anything else on the subsequent sale of real property in regards to Article 6, B, and C? Okay. Two more to go. And the third one is real easy. I should skip to that one first, but I'm going to do them in order. The next one that we're looking at changing is Article 11. And I'm not sure what page that is on. Nine. Page 9. And what we did with Article 9 is we debated. We didn't have chime because of the way the organization meetings fell to make any changes with the initial board. So that'll stay as presented by the Agency of Education in our default articles with it being a eight member board. And there's a chart on the page before eight that talks about how the default or how the initial board will have terms. Some people that we're going to elect this year will have one year terms, some will have two year terms, and some will have three year terms. And each town of the four will have two representatives on each, for each town, elected by everybody in the audience. And that'll take some time, I'm afraid, I think. So what we did is we debated leaving it like that going to a true representation of citizenship, because that's how most of the union boards are set up, that it's based on the population in your community. To do that, Hardwick has 61.5% of the population, Woodbury has 18.5%, Greensboro has 15.6%, and Standard has 4.4%. So if we gave Standard one vote, Woodbury would get four, and Hardwick would get 10 plus. That is too big a board. So we didn't feel that that was fair, and if we went with true representation on the census count, that would not be workable, because there would be too many people on a board, and to get that many board members from a town is not manageable workable, doable, whatever. So then we talked about going with members at large so that we would have a seven member board with anybody from any town voted by everybody from every town and we didn't think that was fair. So we've settled on a seven member board with Hardwick having four, Woodbury, Greensboro and Standard each having one which are, was our initial thought when we first looked at the population. And it was very similar to how Hazen was set up over 50 years ago. And they've adjusted their count per population. But then Stephen discovered that if we did that, we'd have to go back to the large board and do the population because standard numbers are so low. But we decided to go with a hybrid mix. Seeing as how we're out here in the Northeast Kingdom that we could mix our hybrids and be happy. We have four members from Hardwick, one from Greensboro, one from Standard, and one from Woodbury that will be nominated by town. 
and then voted on by the entire electorate so you folks would vote, we would all vote on all seven members. And they would represent all of us because we're one board and not four towns. Because this is a school district made up of four towns and three school buildings currently. And we wanted it to be unified. And the way that we're suggesting that this happen is they would, and it would be done Australian ballot. We're putting that in here because we had that discussion and we're talking about doing Australian balloting at a later date after the initial board, that it would take place after, at the spring 2021 board meeting. So that would be in February, two years from now, at the 2021. So next year in 20, when we hold our first annual meeting of our new district, the people on that current board that are listed for a one-year term would be re-elected to a three-year term. And that would put Woodbury, Standard, and Greensboro with a board member for the term through spring of 2023. In 2021, the current three members that are listed there to be elected would not be replaced. And we would elect two people from Hardwick. And Hardwick would have a board member in the 23 and two in the 24 if, when they're elected again. And it would work out to a seven member board so that we would have staggered and they would be three year terms. So what we're saying is starting in the spring of 2021, we would go to a seven member board that would have four, one, one, and one. It would be done by Australian ballot and that way we would, and we could vote on them at town meeting day when you have your largest turnout of voters. But they could still hold their annual meeting two weeks prior as was voted at our last meeting. And this committee felt that that was the best and the most fair way to distribute the votes because of the population, the number of students, and the percentage of property taxes and how they were and yet not punish a town for having smaller populations because in theory if we went with weighted votes we could say standard only had half a vote if you went with weighted votes and we didn't want to do that so we discussed this at every meeting that we had one moment Carol we discussed this at every meeting that we had and this was the fairest way that our committee could come up with solving this issue understand how you calculated all of that, but across the board to make it fair, it seems like a lot of stress for one representative for a town to go up against four in another town. Why couldn't it be, or, or has any thought been put into two from every town to make the power level even? We did discuss that, and that'll be noted that we should discuss it again. I have written out my carefully thought out uh, presentation here. So uh, I um, assume we've moved along to Article 11. And I realize that the new board will not be seated until 2021, but it appears that the rules are being written now. And so this seems like a good time to make a comment. Uh, the committee has suggested the board be comprised of seven members, four from Hardwick, one from each of the other towns. While this might represent a proportional split based on population, it does not seem fair. If Hardwick has four out of seven votes, the rest of us might as well stay home. It is not our fault, any of our fault that the state put together our towns, which are of much different sizes. But that's what we have. If the merger goes ahead, we will have to work together. I'd like to have the committee consider another configuration that would be maybe five, two, two, and one. This way the smaller towns don't have to worry about always being outvoted with a five, two, two, one arrangement. Hardwick with 61% of the population would have 50% of the board. Woodbury with 19% of the population would have 20% of the board membership. Greensboro and Standard Together they have 20% of the population and they would have 30% of the board members. 
But equally important is the fact that one person should not have the total responsibility of representing their town and school. It's too much to ask. What if a board member is sick or on vacation and much, must miss an important vote? And having an alternate wouldn't really solve this unless the alternate was willing to go to every meeting and keep up on all the issues. <coughs> Plus, <coughs> there are other duties of board members such as representation on the OSSU board, other committees like negotiating, hiring, and more committees, subcommittees that I'm not even aware of. A 10-member board is not unwieldy. Hazen operates with eight members, and they have only one school and six grades to deal with. This new board is going to have a more difficult job. So I ask that the articles committee reconsider their current proposal. I know you've put a lot of work and thought into this, but with the committee weighted to the Hardwick side, it didn't seem to come out fair. Um, so thank you for all your work, the committee, but I wish you would. So I just want to clarify, you're saying five, two, two, and one? Right. Okay, I just want to make sure I have that right. Who was next, Diane? I just want to say I can see why the board was looking at Hazen and how that was formed. I have to say, um, Lakeview Union, the, the law in the books now for how you form an article, uh, I mean, how you form a union, was certainly not followed in a forced merger. When you're forming a union, the, the forming towns each have to vote that they want to join, and then if you're going to invite additional towns, those towns have to vote that they want to join. So it's a very different situation. Um, I think, I agree with what Diana said. I think it's very important to continue the 2 2, two. Um, I have to say, being on the Lakeview Board and the Standard Board both for many, many years, and I think if you talk with anyone who's served on the Lakeview Board, they will tell you there has never been a vote along town lines. It's not been two against six. Um, and that's, we have an eight-member board, and way, way back, 30 years ago when our union was formed, we deliberately chose a larger board because that was the only way that Standard could have more than one vote. I'm not suggesting that Standard have more than one vote here. I'm just saying we're really comparing apples to oranges um, with a forest merger. The other thing I want to say is I agree with having only one person. It puts a lot on that person. I also think it's important as part of this article that um, each town have a member, on a officer on this board. Um, and that's, that's not part of this article. And I've already had people in Standard say to me, why would I serve? If, I, if Hardwick has four, we're never going to be able to outvote them on any issue. We might as well stay home. Close the school now. Everybody go to Hardwick. Sounds very negative, but it's a lot of work to be on a board and to know that you would never prevail and that's why I'm pushing for more time, because I think you need to develop those relationships. And then once you have those, you are one district. You're not going to vote just for your town. You're going to vote for what's in the best interest of everybody. So I'm wondering why we're rushing this. If we have this for two years, why can't this come up later? We can always amend these, as been brought up. OK, anything not relating to when we're going to vote, but on what we are talking about tonight, please. I'm Jen McLean. I'm um, a Hardwick resident, and I would like to suggest to the board to please reconsider using two people from each town for all the reasons that have been stated. Diane, just to clear, how many people are on this Lakeview board, and where are they from? Eight. Six from Greensboro, two from Stanford. Okay, thank you. Who was next? Peter. Peter? When I first went on the Hazen board, uh, Woodbury only had one person, yes. and when I, they got... My question is, what is the representation uh, uh, at Hazen at this point in terms of uh, um, towns? Towns. 422. 422. Four two, two. Because Greensboro only had one to start with also. So 50 years ago when they started. Two at Hazen. Yeah, when they started, Hazen had four Hardwick, one, or three Hardwick, I think it was, maybe four, and one from each of Woodbury and Greensboro. And due to census counts, because every 10 years it's based on the census, it changed, and it's currently four, two, and two. Well, 
Hello. Well, this is certainly a, a tough issue. I think on a federal level, they dealt with this issue by creating a Senate and House of Representatives. So uh, Vermont has the same number of senators as California, but representatives goes the other way. So in this case, um, we have to figure out a way to have a fair system with such disparate towns. So I, I'd like to second uh, Diana's idea. I think that would work well. And I'd also, as a fallback, uh, perhaps look at it a 3 one 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 situation. Um, that would give, uh, that would mean everybody would have to cooperate to, to get the full vote. Over here, ma'am. I, I came prepared tonight to say something about the same thing and maybe have um, Hardwick with their four and each of the towns with their one and then a member at large from the towns. So you could have a four four and people would have to work together to your point. But I think the idea of five two 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 kind of solves that issue as well. Okay, thank you. Anyone else with something new? Well, I think if we're going on a representational thing like Diana's. I don't see any provision in here for population changes. If this is in per perpetuity, do we need a provision that it gets reviewed? Okay, that was the part where Standard only had one and Hardwick had like eight, and we decided not to go that way. So no, there's no change in population because we just agreed, and actually the numbers came from the Lakeview representative that we go four, one, and one. And maybe I threw, just threw John under the bus, I don't know. But that was the first I saw it was back in December when he presented an entire document as it was supported by the Lakeview Board, as my understanding. And uh, so that's where, that's where we got the numbers from and that's where we stayed. And that's all I'm going to say right now. We did a lot of rattling around on this. What makes sense? What makes fair? One of the c our concerns was that the 22222 that we were inherit inheriting in the default articles would in a relatively short time harbor animosities that we really don't need and would get in the way of working together as a board. So one of the things we talked about was how can we do this? And the best solution we came up with was uh, with the 4111 with the hybrid voting so that Woodbury, Greensboro, and Standard have a voice in who gets elected representing Hardwick, very much like the 22222 structure, so that uh, we get to pick and choose who is the most desirable person we want to see, see from a Hardwick, and vice versa. Yes, just as Hardwick can choose who sits you know, and it depends on who votes um, and who runs and who's willing to do the work. Having been on school boards for many years, I would not take this challenge on. It's too time consuming for me in my life. It'll have to take someone that is committed to the schools, schools, plural, committed to all four towns and committed to all of our children because you can't go in there thinking, I'm going to go only for Hardwick or I'm only going to go for Woodbury. Our board members have to be from all four towns and they have to work together. I'd like to add also when we were considering the formation of board, the proposed formation, we looked at the guidance issued by the Agency of Education on constitutionality and different formations of the board and there was one word that struck me and it is, it's this, when voting is done at large for a member of a board, that there is a presumption that that member will serve all the students within the district. That's idealistic, I understand, that, there, that you're presuming that someone will serve your neighbor as equally as well as themselves. But Part of this democratic process relies on a faith and that there's, that there's a common good at work here. So I just want you to know that we've considered this. There's a reality, but there's also an ideal. And it's been very difficult to try to strike a balance, but we're trying and we appreciate it. And our work will be improved by your comments. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, I have a lady right here, and I'll get back to you, Diane, after Thank you. My name's Ginger. I'm from Woodbury. Um, and I have a question and a comment. And my question is, in the ballot, would people be identified by their town? So you would know there's five people from Woodbury running, but I only vote for one? Or yes. Okay. Because it would be like your presidential and senator, where instead of saying for Senate, you vote for one, it would be for the town of Woodbury, one year term, or well, they're all going to be yeah, three okay. years. It would say for Woodbury, three year term, vote for not more than one. Okay. And you could have 20 people. And it would be how we currently vote. Not likely, but yeah. But not likely. <laughs> not, not, like, not likely, but no. no. But, I mean, the yeah. setup would be that it would be you'd know what town, and they would have to get on the ballot from their town with their voters approving their petition. And then it would be a commingled vote. And then it, everybody would vote on the same sheet of paper, and they would all be put together to the clerk of the district, which currently is forget, Lori, just drew a bank, blank, Laura Lee. And it would be her responsibility to get the votes counted. She doesn't have to be the only one <coughs> counsel. She has to see that they are counted, and then report the totals to the general public. And then the new board members would be sworn in, just as they currently are, and it would go on from there. Okay, and my second part of this is that I was, I look around and I see a lot of familiar faces from other meetings, and I think this is a very informed group. And I've been trying to keep up, and I gotta tell you, I'm more confused now than I was. I have questions. I, there were questions tonight that I didn't know I had. Um, so, to honor your request that we not keep repeating stuff about the timeline, I would just ask that we have an opportunity for another public hearing before there's a vote on this. Don't we have to do that anyway after we have the final document? Well, this is your public input. Okay, this is just, uh, but you there can. has, yeah, we can do that. Okay, that'd be great, thank you. Might as well. Um, <laughs> Just a quick question, and it's come up already, but um, uh, the idea of alternates. And uh, are alternates allowed, and how are they selected, or does that have to be a provision within these heard, articles? In my 30 years on the school board, I've never heard of alternate school board members. Yeah, but if is there's only one, one member from the town, the question of whether there could be an alternate is a good I question. I don't know if that's legal. That would have to be gone through the lawyer. I've never heard of it, and I was involved with the school boards for a while. I'm not aware of that being allowed. Yeah, well, it, it, it's um, uh, apparently you're, you're modifying uh, the parts that can be modified in these articles, and that may be an opportunity to do that. If, yeah, but if it's not legal, we can't do it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Diane? I just want to say again, um, I don't, I, I heard what John had to say, Miller, but I don't see a compelling reason why we need to be voting on this now. It's Again, always we're not discussing that tonight, Diane. I'm, not, I'm just saying that's that. Take to the full board, the new board. I'm just saying this is my comment, Orais. Okay. Is that we can wait to discuss this? I hear a lot of people have questions, and it is confusing. And I've had other board members say to me that aren't here tonight that they're too confused to even talk about it. So. Okay. But again, we're not voting on this tonight. We're getting your input, and. The full board, the new board that's elected will decide the fate of these articles. And they'll have all this information. Okay. They'll know all this. No, go ahead. I, I was just going to mention that, not to go backwards in this, but honestly, the way that I read it, just Article 7 alone, um, it looks like this has to be in place for J July 1st because of transportation employees and contracts for academic year just for teachers and busing. If, if we don't do any amendments, the default articles that were issued to us by the state board will take precedence, and those are the ones the new board will have to follow. The feeling was the committee looked at those and decided that they needed to be personalized to our needs, and that's what we're offering. That's why we have to do it. And that's why we have to do it, is to personalize them to our needs. If these aren't what people feel 
and you've got, what, 25 people here out of over 2,000 voters, then we have to do what the public says. Hi, my name is Sean, and I'm just looking at the hybrid model and just agreeing with the many other people who are talking. I don't know that the seven-member uh, idea is as good as Diane's idea. I like hers much better. Uh, or something that offers more fail-safes. You had mentioned uh, that we should all, or you said that they will all have to work together. Uh, I think they should all work together, but they don't have to. And I think another model would help force them to work together. Okay. Anything else in regards to that? Oops, oh, Stephen, I forgot about you. How could I do that? There have been numerous comments made here about the possibility of not proposing these amendments. And I'd, I'd like to say that I believe, or as that those, just as a point of order, that those comments are relevant because this committee could decide in the end to propose to the board that they stay with the default article. So that's, that's my opinion. I, I, think, I think those are relevant. We could decide after all this, we'll stay, stay with the default. So then I'm going to ask this question for clarity in my notes. For the people who would like to not rush on these, would the preference be to go with default articles rather than change these? Because we do, these are the agreement articles to merge. So if we merge in July, we have to have something, this is what we follow to merge with. So is the preference of the people who are speaking out saying we need to take more time, be that in July we accept the default articles, which is everything in red and black and all the stuff that's been struck out, um, or, or not? I guess that's my question. Because I want to be able to accurately put that in this. And to clarify that, where we've put in lease, we would not have the leased spaces. We would not have Woodbury School. We would not have four, five, and six at Lakeview in another building. The conveyed buildings would be all that mattered, and anything that was not conveyed would be closed, is my understanding of what would have to happen. It doesn't have to be only default articles or some of the su suggested changes. We could accept some of the changes Yes. and then not use some of the others. Yeah. So it's not either or. Just, yeah, but that's what I'm hearing from some people is either or. But that doesn't, that doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't have to be. And again, the final decision, yes, the final decision will be with the new board whether we say we don't want to progress with anything and this committee does say default articles only. What we've done is out there and the new board people running would be aware of it and it would ultimately be their choice. I would suggest that the Articles Committee look very, very strongly at the composition of the future board. That is the one article that has had the most discussion tonight. It's the one that potentially is by far the most divisive. And I understand, John Miller, when you said that, that the 222 model would create division so will the 4-3 model create division from the very beginning. Diana has outlaid a model that will be a compromise between that. Hardwick will still have a lot of votes. They'll have half the votes, but they won't have the majority. And if we really do want this to work, then we can't give the majority of the board to one town. That's the one I suggest you look hard at. It's not really on this subject, but I wanted to mention another <laughs> elephant in the room, which is uh, what might happen or what are the plans uh, for an extension that the uh, legislature yeah. might approve. We don't know whether they will or... You mean the Senate version? Right. If, if the Senate version... <clears throat> it's in conference committee right now, and the new board would have to vote to do, and again, this falls to the new vote board, the first thing they have to do is vote whether we merge, if given the option, July 1, 2019 or July 1, 2020. If you merge 2020, you lose the guarantee of 175,000 plus dollars 
from the small school grants from Lakeview and Woodbury. Don't really know that yet. If that's in there. That's in there currently. But it may come out. It may come out. We don't know that. So the Senate version has it in there. And the House didn't come up with a carrot. They were more of a step. And <clears throat> again, excuse me, it depends on what happens and the time in which it happens. And there's no guarantee with legislature from my years of experience to say that they're going to vote in a timely manner. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen and what politics are going to play in it. But we have to be prepared today with what we know today. And that is the merger will take place July 1, 2019. And this year, we have small school grants that was awarded to Woodbury and Lakeview. There's no guarantee today that next year we'll have that. And there's no guarantee on anything other than what we currently have in writing from the Agency of Education as to what we have to do. So that's why we're progressing as we are. I just want to say a few more words about what Brett said and also Diana's uh, suggestion. Many of the voluntarily merged districts have gone to this exact kind of model. Um, for instance, Kingdom East, the largest town is Linden. They gave up one of their votes in the spirit of cooperation. Nobody made them do it. The AOE wasn't issuing. They had to develop their own articles of agreement. They did not have default articles right. like you do if you're a forced merger. And so a lot of districts came to the same conclusion that some people here tonight have. Okay. Thank you. And again, that will be discussed. We've got notes. We've got a copy of Diana's statement to reread and totally absorb Friday night. Looks like that's going to be a long meeting. I support amendments to the amendments and not the default. I support amendments to the amendments and not the default. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. That's all right. Well, we've had a lot of individual comments, and I wonder, because we're here discussing if, if it would be worthwhile to have a sense of the meeting. I know it's not binding up how many people would like this configuration of the seven members and how many people would like the board to reconsider it. Realizing this is a very small proportion, just for who's here. Okay. Is that... Okay. I, mean, I have clearly heard nobody likes the four of three, the, the seven member model. The there are people who haven't spoken in our there, It's true, it's true. There's and those same people probably would raise their hand one way or the other either. I find that as moderator at town meeting that that happens as well. But Do you want a show of hands? One hand, Carol. <laughs> I've been moderator for 15 years. I catch things like that. Okay, just because we've had a request for it, all those that do not like, and this I think will be easier, the seven member as proposed by the committee for those that are here tonight, how many do not like that idea? Yes, okay, that's the majority. Okay, thank you. That'll be noted and discussed. That was 11. But is it voted as a by whole all. or by town? It's voted by the towns. The whole district has to approve it. Okay? The next article I promised is easy. This, this is a new one. <clears throat> and you pronounce it severability? Yes. Severability. Severability. I finally learned how to say it. It's the last one. It's the last page of the document. It's all in blue because it's new. And what the intent is, if any part of this articles, any of the articles are deemed illegal, then only that article is affected and it doesn't affect the entire document. If we don't have it in there and Article 4Q, which isn't, isn't in existence, but if it was, was deemed unconstitutional or illegal or had illegal verbiage in it and had to be struck from the document, only that section would be erased. The rest of this document would remain in effect. And that's what most contracts have in theirs. Peter. So that kind of begs the question, has this been legally reviewed? This, document? this has been basically legally reviewed to make sure that we didn't bring you anything blatantly out. 
but before it goes for a vote, the entire document will be legally viewed and told, we will, we will be told how we should vote on it, whether it's individually, whether we have to produce the entire article that's being, or if we can just put the intent and what's there and how to vote on it. Because my experience, we've never voted on anything like this. The only thing I can equate this to is if a town approves a town plan. And then I don't remember how we voted on that, and that was decades ago. So this has to go before a lawyer, and he will be the one telling us how we have to vote on it and making his recommendations. So, are there any questions in Article 15? I bet that was a, a given. Do we have time for all of that? Yes. I mean, you're, you're, yes. you're, you're confident that a lawyer yes. can do this under tight constraints? Yes. The, the time, lawyer's already looked at it. The lawyer's already looked at it, has issued opinions, um, didn't find anything blatantly wrong, and it's now up to the committee to finalize the verbiage and get it to the lawyer so that it can be presented for future decisions. And also, uh, the lawyers also told us to take certain things out, and that's why you're not even seeing them tonight. Yes. 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 We're not talking about <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> if not, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out on this beautiful, sunny Monday evening. <laughs> When, it, when it's not snowing, I'm happy. I still have two feet of snow in my backyard and have no flower bed. One more comment. I would really urge the committee to look at uh, requiring that each school have a parent community advisory council because you're going to have folks in each town that are used to going to school board members, used to their local setting. We don't want to lose people's thoughts on that. And the merge board, they're going to be there for everybody, but I'm sure it's going to be a pretty crowded agenda. So I know that some of the other um, merged districts have done this, and I yes, just encourage have. that. And one last thing, and I don't know if Catherine got it, is I really think that the merge board should look at requiring that each, making sure that each town has an officer on the merge board. Otherwise, you end up with the same problem on the 4-3. Okay. But currently, there's only three officers. Right. Well, so, three, yeah. yeah. Um, yes, Lori. Just, just one thing that I want to thank this transitional board for all this hard work and your head must ache every single time that you meet after meeting. It's, it's, an incredible, it's an incredible trust that we put in all of you too. And I think that's part of why this meeting has lower attendance because it's not a beautiful sunny day. And uh, people don't really have that much else going on that much. I think that they do know the trust that they've put into, into this board nice to be appreciated when we do work like that and for my years on the board I always make sure that I thank people too so and I thank you wholeheartedly for coming out um, sometimes we just have to agree to disagree and I found that out especially working in the public all the years I have and Kim's telling me it's time to close so okay thank you all and I'm going to adjourn Kim's meeting thank you all very much